Well, a warm welcome to this talk, Sunday the 21st of May. Now, I want to be reporting today on this um, release from the National uh, Institutes of Health about a new uh, mRNA vaccine, in this case for uh, influenza. Now, what concerns me here is if an mRNA vaccine is given in the arm, this influenza mRNA vaccine, we're not talking about COVID vaccines now, mRNA vaccine for influenza, this is given into the arm. Can there be some systemic distribution? Can the vaccine go everywhere? Well, these lipid nanoparticles we now believe do go everywhere from the freedom of information data that we obtained from Australia. Now, if the vaccine lipid nanoparticles are going everywhere and they contain this uh, messenger RNA instruction to make the vaccine, what can happen is this. So let's suppose this is a blood vessel somewhere in the body. Now, it could be actually anywhere in the body. So what we have is we have, uh, we have the layers of the blood vessel round about here, and they are vary depending on the blood vessel it is. But what all the blood vessels have, regardless of the size of the blood vessel, is in the middle they have this lumen, this bit in the middle where the blood goes through. And the lumen is always lined with these vascular endothelial cells. And these vascular endothelial cells just like any cell in the body, are surrounded by a, a, a lipid layer, a phospholipid bilayer. And that means the lipid nanoparticles, just like two bubbles <laughs> merging together that you play with with children, they'll merge together. So the lipid nanoparticles will merge onto this, um, this fatty membrane around the cells in the body. Fine if it's in the arm, it'll just give you a sore arm. But if it's systemically distributed, for example, this vessel could be Oh, for example, um, it, could be, uh, it could be a vessel in the heart uh, or in the brain or in the liver or anywhere. So what would happen is that these lipid nanoparticles would be given and the lipid nanoparticle would uh, fit onto, sort of merge with the lipid membrane of the cell, put its RNA into the cell. So you would end up without RNA in all of these cells potentially. And of course, the RNA uses the cell's own genetic uh, material, its ribosomes, its own genetic uh, protein producing material to make copies of the particular antigen, in this case, an influenza antigen that you want to produce. And that would then go onto the surface of the cell there like that. So you'd have this uh, influenza antigen on the surface of the cell being produced, being produced by the cell's own genetic uh, material. Now, of course, the thing is, this antigen is, is foreign. The body thinks, oh, this is not part of me, so it makes an immune response to it, which is exactly what we want. So this would attract immune cells, and these immune cells would then um, make the antibodies. So the immune cells here can be attracted to this, and they can produce things like uh, antibodies, these... Uh, very often Y-shaped uh, molecules that uh, protect against disease. So that's what's supposed to happen. But the point is, as well as if there's a foreign antigen there, as well as stimulating the immune system, it also stimulates an inflammatory response. Now, as I say, if it's in your arm, you get a sore arm. doesn't matter too much. Sore arm for a few days. Also, if it's in your arm, uh, cells called uh, antigen uh, presenting cells will pick up the, uh, the antigen that's produced and take it to your armpits and you'll make some... Um, the lymph nodes in your armpits will make some extra uh, immune response. But the point is, the immunity causes an inflammatory response at the same time. So what we actually have here, we end up with cells. This attracts cells here to this, which causes uh, inflammation. So these cells will release inflammatory chemicals because they're attracted to the foreign material here, this antigen that's been produced. So what we can end up with is uh, an inflammatory response. And as I say, if this is in your arm, no big deal. But if this is in a blood vessel that goes to the heart or through the heart, then if it's in the blood vessel that's supplying the heart muscle with blood, then that would cause inflammation of the heart muscle, which is, which is myocarditis. So that is my concern, really, that to what degree will this new vaccine be systemically absorbed? Because we believe it will be systemically absorbed to some degree because these lipid nanoparticles are so small. They kind of get everywhere. So that is going to happen. Now, the other, the other question in my mind is um, this 
the uh, the messenger RNA can get all around the body, it can go everywhere. So, um, how ma- how many cells will this will, will this get to? If it gets to a small number of cells, you'll produce a small amount of antigen. If it gets to a large number of cells, you'll produce a, a large amount of antigen. So, how do we control the dose of antigen that is being produced? So, is there going to be systemic inflammation? How do we control the amount of antigen that, that's produced? How do we know there's going the amount of systemic um, inflammation that's going to be? Because this trial is only looking at 50 participants, just 50 participants altogether. So it's hard to see how it's going to pick up any uh, safety signals. So that is my main sort of pathophysiological concern. This systemic absorption and antigen can be produced anywhere, generating an immune and an inflammatory response potentially anywhere. Now, the question is, this is very simple biology. I think you understand it now. The question is, why hasn't this been picked up by the uh, the vaccine uh, manufacturers and the people sponsoring the vaccine manufacturers? For example, the UK government has just awarded a £1,000 million for development of vaccine near Oxford um, of, with, with Moderna. Um, why haven't they taken this into account? Because this is very basic biology to do with potential new influenza vaccines. So that would be my concern. I would like answers to that really before we uh, we go ahead with this. Systemic distribution, that blood vessel could be anywhere, therefore inflammation could be anywhere. Now, the mere fact that you and I now understand this means this is not complicated science. So why isn't this being taken into account is a fundamental question. And I look forward to an answer from the British government and from uh, from Moderna. And indeed, the Australian government's just generating a plant to produce 100 million doses of mRNA vaccine a year with Moderna. The Canadian government, the same. Huge production already in the United States. And now this new plant near Oxford in the UK to produce 250 million doses, potentially uh, a year. So let's have those questions answered and then we'll think about going ahead. I'm going to leave that there because that explanation has gone on a bit longer than I thought. But I'll do a follow up video to this where we explain the details of what's being proposed by the Uh, National Institutes of Health. So we'll leave that there. So for now, thank you for watching.